Hello there guys and season's greetings. We've got a very Christmassy update for Railroads Online. There's actually a couple I'm going to try and cover uh, in this here video, but they're calling it a Christmas special. Uh, so they've updated and patched a few things as far as loco numbering bugs. Uh, of course, added snow, which you can see here because it is now officially winter. We got a new Cook 280 Constellation. A new snow plow, which is pretty cool. I've got set up there as well. Uh, they've updated the Morse code bit, which uh, which we got down here to the right. We've got uh, little telegraph stations. It's neat, and what they do is uh, is really neat. And they've they've updated a bunch of bugs as well, and and updated performance, frame rate. Um, added a new crossover or diamond, if you will. And uh, player icons and names are now on the map, so if you're playing with some buds, you should be able to see one another on the map. But, we'll check out the train here in just a moment, obviously. But one of the cool things they updated uh, in the last uh, patch to come out, uh, I want to say it was a couple of weeks ago, were these little telegraph booths. Now, you plop them down in the world just like you do anything else. I'll go ahead and show you how, just in case you don't know, you just grab it. You can hear it beeping. That's pretty neat. You hear the Morse code in there. And you just slam it down. That sucker's good to go. So I've got a couple set up through my little um, blossoming railroad, if you will. Let me go ahead and get rid of this thing here. Don't want too many. You definitely don't want to place them close together either because there are problems with that. So here it is. It's a little telegraph shed. Looks nice. The wood looks very nice. It's uh, weathered on the outside. Got coal stains and grease and just all kinds of general varieties of crap and schmeg all over it but it looks nice uh you got your your pow uh, pole over here as well what would be cool is if they somehow connected the wires between stations that would look very neat sadly there's only uh these that go from the little shed to the pole itself but it's uh it's nicely rendered it looks really nice it's got these old glass domes over it just like they had back in the old days uh, but it's a it's a good looking little model. You can go inside, of course. It's the first time I've actually really checked it out. Close the door because it's mighty freezing out there, like it's about to be across a majority of the U.S. this week. Holy crap! It's going to be like 30 in Florida over Christmas. It's insane. I don't know if you can open the windows. I don't think you can. I'm not seeing it. We got your stove. I believe it continues to go, so you don't have to add wood to it. Got your little kettle there for some hot coffee or tea wherever you're from you go towards that and the little stand will flip up and down on its own got you a little chair over here and of course the uh the little telegraph models and some some jars over there for whatnot your timetable booklet on the left over there little little ink jar ink well um but yeah neat little thing but what you can do is go ahead and hit m open the map and you can see these t's those are the telegraph offices you just click on one and voila, we are now, get out of here, we are now at the main depot. How cool is that? This has probably been one of the biggest things I think a lot of people requested for this game since day one. Because it was kind of a pain in the butt to move around where you were on the map. Uh, so this, it's very cool. Not only that, but they, they added a way to, to have a model, a new model on the map so it, it fits. It's, you know, it's not just a... A function but it's got some form to it as well if you will so that's pretty neat too then we've also got we'll go ahead and throw it down over here we got a new uh, a diamond or junction if you will uh, 45 degree crossover this sucker right here you of course got to put um, uh, bedding down but it looks very nice I'll definitely have to uh, throw some of these up and then you have got the one that they already had, which is just the 90 degree scrape one there. Bam, bam. So those look very nice as well. And I think that is about it as, as far as that kind of stuff. Now the locomotive, the new Connie or Constellation. Uh, very neat. Uh, now what's interesting about this thing, we'll go ahead and open it up here and take a look at her. I think... Uh, for those of you familiar with Train Sim Classic and the developer's Machine Rail and a lot of the really cool Steam Locos they've been releasing in the last, what, about two years now, uh, I think this is part of their handiwork. It might even be that model. 
because they made one of these. And I know uh, that, that one or two of the, the people on Machine Rail are, are team uh, part of Railroads Online for modeling or whatnot. So I think it's the same locomotive, um, if I'm not mistaken. It dang sure looks the same. So this is the first... Um, option you can get here it's just uh black with the um the red leafing up there it's the second paint this this is why i think it's this is why i think it's ported from machine rails uh 280 and train sim this is this is how that one um essentially looked uh the the kind of build look straight off the uh, factory floor if you will number three which is all black with a little bit of uh gold trim that's the one i like there that's what i've got set up down the line back there number four this is kind of funky uh green black gold red wheels i like the red wheels uh i don't know not a not a fan of the green one though and number five oh this is the one with the the gold trim okay this one is not this one's just all black that one looks very nice as well you'll also notice on the piston up here uh on a couple of them it says keep off which is uh, just a nice nice little detail we'll go ahead and plop one down here we'll do the all black you can of course add a number name it whatever you want put something on the tender and you can change the smokestacks too so you've got the straight top hat different congdens uh and the headlight too i wish they would add an option for the smaller uh slightly more modern headlights that would be cool because these ginormous headlights are well ginormous we'll go ahead and order that and plop it down and just take a look at it here cook so who was it cook and gosh who else made these was it baldwin anyway this was the cook 280 uh like i said i think it's from machine rail it's got to be that model constellation or connie for short uh with customizations of course we went over uh, and it was highly popular in, in real life back in the day. Just about every road, you know, Narragate or not, used these at the time after about 1870 for hauling freight. The uh, the Mogul 260 was more of like a passenger-oriented steam locomotive for the most part on average. But they were, they were used everywhere. This is one of the most, like, common steam locomotives back in the day. But... Uh, I think what you can get by default for this is what it's supposed to be is Denver South Park and Pacific, so DSP and P. Uh, but anyway, Cook made 11 of these, and uh, gosh, I can't remember the name of the other company right now. It's it's not on the mind, but they made nine because uh, DSP and P had 20 overall, so Cook made 11 of them. Uh, was it who was it Baldwin? Massive brain fart, a lot of cobwebs in there. But uh, they had about 13,000 pounds of tractive effort, and they weighed about 112,000 pounds. But, uh, you know, a nice, just very common, good-looking locomotive. 280, of course, instead of 260. The tender looks very good as well. It looks about up to snuff for a lot of the stuff in, uh, in Railroads Online. I mean, this is typically what stuff looks like. Can you put lamps back here? Oh, yeah, you can. Nice. All right, so we've got different color markers you can throw back there. That's a nice little feature. So you can do red and green. Christmas colors back there. How apropos. This is the Asfavar <laughs> Railway. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, it, it still slaps it down where you got to connect the tender and the loco. It's kind of weird. And I'm also noticing I'm getting some weird things going on with the shiny bits. So, i.e., the, the rails and the wheels. I do have AMD. AMD tends to suffer with a lot of things, sadly, if you can see that weird flashing. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. Um, but yeah, it's doing some funky things. This is locomotive Ed Gigagins. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, too much eggnog. But yeah, the uh, the actual boiler looks kind of funny. There's like these weird little circles in there you can kind of see. I don't know if that's... Um, totally legit or not it looks kind of funky though but it's a good looking locomotive of course let's see if we can add anything up here maybe like flags or something got your headlight on like that 
Got the Cook Plate. Patterson, New Jersey, of course, is where they were made. Patterson, man, it's going to bug the crap out of me. I can't remember who made the other nine for DSP and P. I want to say it was Baldwin. But anyway, yeah, this is the new the new uh, Connie. I almost said Mogul, 280. So new locomotive. I mean, you've got, let's go over the options that we have now. And they keep teasing a, a ton of other rolling stock. We almost have more locomotives now than we do cars. So let's see. Two, three, four, five, six. Six freight cars, technically two cabooses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen. So yeah, we've got way more locomotives now than uh, the freight cars. So we need some more rolling stock, of course, but uh also says the boiler pressure on these is 140 psi i don't know if that's correct either the tractive effort looks about right they were all different you know it's kind of like when you buy a graphics card or something it's all about the silicon lottery it was like that back in the day with a lot of steam locomotives to a degree but uh so one of the other cool things to this update is the wedge snowplow to add with the winter setting that we have here which is pretty dang neat so it's this sucker right here builder west side lumber company west side lumber company was in california i cannot pronounce the name of it i'm not going to try the the city it derived uh but it was one of the last remaining uh narrow gauge um railroads if i'm not mistaken you know like like making money financially um, but anyway, it says build date 1885. Uh, three foot gauge, snare gauge, obviously, and it weighs about 13,000 pounds. Uh, and these are pretty neat as well. This is just a, a side one, uh, a side bay, if you will. It just shoots it off to one side. And typically, back in the day, when when they were running these things, they could, you know, require up to like five locomotives in some cases just to get enough power behind this thing because uh, you know several feet of snow miles and miles long is very very heavy so they need a lot of force to get the thing moving and they have to get it up to essentially about 50 mile an hour up to get them uh you know working and doing what they're supposed to do because you know they're supposed to shove snow out of the way but uh they they often especially when they they first kind of began their tenure as doing what they did could be very dangerous as well um back in the day using these things but you can customize this as well so you can add a number on there name this one is uh, and then you've got a multitude of paints i like this one it's the red paint and it's got the the paint like worn off on the front there i like that one a lot this one i've got set up down the road this one as well, this this will go along nicely with the black and uh, naked wood color um, like you get on a lot of the locomotives, so this would fit perfectly with that. And then there's the brown and black, whereas this one's got like the metal front, and that's wood. So I think two of them are wood. Yeah, there we go. And we'll take a look at that one since I've got, um, got the other one down the way there. So I'm still getting a weird thing going on with the wheels. Uh, I don't know what the heck's going on there, but hopefully that's corrected at some point. But again, a, a nice looking little model. Very, very sharp. The wood down here looks kind of funky, if I'm honest. The graining on the bottom of this thing, but uh, the, the trucks look pretty good. You know, the bearing boxes and all that. This little bit right here in the middle definitely could look better. Um, yeah, it's not the, the best looking thing, but... The bolts look nice and the rivets and all that stuff. And and as far as what they put in here, I guess they put sand, water, you know, whatever they could, um, you know, to get in here to, to put some weight down on this sucker. But the top of it looks uh, pretty good as well. I don't think you can open that cap. Nah, you can't. It'd be kind of neat if you could uh, add sand to it if you needed to or whatnot. But you've got multiple varieties of this thing. Um... The wood on the front looks okay. It's kind of got that weird, like, like melted plastic look to it a, a tiny bit. Um, I think the metal one looks looks a bit better, um, but it's you know it's not the worst. Uh, the the wood on the side here looks pretty good. 
But like uh, the actual plow itself and the stuff on the side where these uh, wood seams are look kind of funky. Whoop. Go ahead and get back on top here. But the shape of it's very nice. It's a very cool looking plow. So with that being said, we will go ahead and hit the map and teleport back up to the uh, near the sawmill there. Nice and toasty in here. And we'll go get in our train and see what happens. So I've just got like a way car or a, uh, a company car on the back. Uh, you know, for personnel, if you will. But this is the red one that I've chosen, which I think looks pretty good. It's still got the weird, uh, like, wood on the side here. And while I'm at it, let me go ahead and throw some fuel on here. Just so we're ready to go. When I'm ready to go. Add all to that. But yeah, this is the red one with the metal plow, and I think this is probably one of the better looking ones. Looks very cool. Something about snow plows. I've already watched my fair share of videos of trains plowing uh, various parts of the Rockies this year, and it's just cool as hell to watch. Um, the metal on this does look pretty good, though. It's got that, that beaten down, worn, metallic look, and the blend between the paint and the metal down there looks very good as well. It's, uh, it's just very nice looking. I like the way that looks. Get up here and take a... Holy crap, this guy can jump to the top, please. Nope. Yeah, so it does this thing now. When you walk, you don't have to jump. It just gets on top of certain things, whether you're on bridges, whatever. I've noticed that as well. I guess that was patched or updated at some point. Top of this thing looks very cool like a ski slope and something else they fixed so this little way car you used to just walk right through the porches and now you actually get on top of them so that was correct I don't know exactly when that was corrected but it was obviously done go inside here yeah because you used to just walk like straight up on the floor basically so that's all gravy now which is nice well I had some lamps back here huh? Is the SARR Schnauzer Atlantic Railroad. This is engine Gabagool. Uh, and I will get that light on. There we go. The lamp. I don't think you can add anything to the front here. Oh, wait. Hold the phone. You damn sure can. Nice. Okay. I like little details like that. I know on the, uh, the mogul pack, I think, for train simulator, um, the guys at Machine Rail made it to where you could put flags on the front, which looked very stately and cool. Uh, but this one's got the little keep off bit there on the front. Next to the piston, Patterson, New Jersey. It was a uh, Cook L&M. Yeah, so it's Cook Locomotive and Machine Works, I think. But this one looks very sharp. I like the white rim of the wheels. Just a good looking locomotive, the 280. One of the classics, one of the uh, OG triple OGs. So we'll get up on here. You can, of course, open the doors. You can open the windows. I don't think you can open these front ones here, sadly. Yes, you cannot. Is there a hatch? There is no hatch on the top of this thing. I thought there was for whatever reason. Get that one open. There's our brake. Got a little Earl can. A grease can. Yeah, I bet you this is a uh, machine rail. All right, let's go on down the road here, shall we? Um, I'm going to do the F key first. And we'll zoom out a bit here on the Gabagool. Yeah, that's a nice looking setup. I'm going to do some plowing here. So it's got a compressor generator, I don't believe. Yeah, it just goes right back down. We'll do the bell. And, uh, it sounds okay, but it doesn't sound as good as the other new bell that they did, uh, in the last, the last video I made looking at, uh, one of the new models. It doesn't quite sound the same. Not sure what's going on with that. Um, of course, got the cylinder cocks you can open up there. Some of the best looking steam in, in, like, any train sim. As far as I've seen so far, let's go ahead and throw the reverser forward a little bit. We'll make this thing work, so we'll we'll put it fairly low because it's not a heavy train. 
We'll do about uh, 40 percentile there. Let go of the brakes. Ah, a whistle. Still not quite the best. I, I really wish they would start up in the whistle game. Uh, some of the locomotives have decent whistles, but that one is... Yeah, it'd be nice if, if we got some of the, the sounds from Machine Rail. All right, let's get this sucker on the move, shall we? Give her a little bit of rig. Back out the view some more here. A little bit more. I do really, really like the cylinder cock animation in uh, Railroads Online. So you'll notice a couple little puffy cotton balls off the uh, plow here. As soon as you get moving and there's a sound too, I'll shut up. You can actually hear some crunching going on there. Once you get up to a certain speed, you actually get quite a bit. Decent looking animation. Now, I don't know what exactly they did. This is Unity Engine. Or wait, no, did they go to Unreal? I think they went to Unreal. This is Unreal, right? I can't remember. I know the last game was Unity. Anyway, I'm assuming what they did with that is maybe use the same kind of Steam animation. There goes the Telegraph Office. And just added it to the front of the thing. It's kind of funky looking, though. Little balls on the side. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a little funny looking. Let's get rid of those cylinder cocks here. And uh, let's open her up. Yeah, that's that's got a very prominent loop to it, that whistle. Alright, wide open. Yeah, look, so they, they shoot farther and farther back the faster you go, so that's kind of cool. And just like with all things Railroads Online, holy crap, look how high that's shooting. Good lord. Wow, I didn't expect it to shoot that high. That is pretty darn high. But yeah, like I was saying, with all things Railroads Online, you don't typically want to go super fast. The physics aren't really thrilled about high speed uh, because I've already knocked this thing off the front, and we'll hop out here and take a look at it because one of the good things about this, this little plow deal is um, it actually hooks up to your, uh, your pilot fairly easily. A lot of stuff is hard to connect to the front of locomotives because they typically did mark that way back in the day. Uh, but I guess they made this a special condition to where it actually hooks up and you can hear the sound. See if I can do it here. Alright, it didn't make the sound that time. Alright, anyway, but it does, it does actually connect to where... Um, you know, there's no weirdness going on, so you don't just, like, slam on the brakes and the thing keeps on rolling down the track. So, anyway, that's it, guys. Christmas update, as they're calling it, with the new uh, 280 Connie from Cook, uh, Locomotive and Machine Works, and the Wedge, and uh, a couple of other updates. I'll link uh, the article down below and where you can find the game if you're uh, new to it and want to check it out. But uh, that's it. I hope you have a very happy holidays out there, guys. Take care, and I'll see you next time.